All right, so after spending some time with the Chestnut Pro, I just want to give my thoughts on uh, the board and a few things I think are quite relevant for people to understand if they're new to the market or already in the market looking for such a board. So first off, uh, for those that don't know, if you're new here and don't know what Chestnut Air is, it's a new, well, not a relatively new electronic chess board that was new to the market, I believe, beginning last year, I believe, maybe late 2021, but I actually... Uh, retailed and sold in 2022 and shipped. Um, to me, it's you know one of the best uh, new boards out, if not the best, because again, it has uh, had a great level of polish to its apps, to its piece recognition, and and just just a total package. Again, it's not without its faults, just like really nothing without its faults, even well-established products. But be it as it's made, the DNA from chestnut air has evolved to the chestnut pro which is this nice smooth board very well crafted pieces leds are hidden underneath this solid wood uh, what's a wood veneer on top of solid wood and um it's simply amazing so um so now before i begin to talk a little bit you know about some of the great things i just want to say some considerations when buying a board like this first of all it is about 21 and a quarter inches square on each side so you're going to have to have a little bit bigger real estate um and i think most people would have, would expect that because this is a tournament size board um second of all um is that because it's made out of high quality solid wood it's um, a little bit heavier than normal. So when you say playing online and say have to switch from black to white, maybe you want to have your stuff to set up or have a table set up where you can easily switch sides so you can play both colors very efficiently because again, very well crafted product, very got a lot of health to it. It's not super heavy or anything like that, but it's definitely got some health and it feels fantastic in the hand. So, who would I say this board is for? Okay, if you've already been in the market looking for a tournament size board, definitely put this in your queue. Compare and contrast this to other, you know, fantastic, you know, tournament size boards that are on the market because this is one that should grab your attention and just like any other other nice one should grab your attention as well. Um, if you're just a straight up collector and looking for something new to add to your collection, well, let me tell you, you will not be disappointed adding this to your collection. Um, and also, um, if you, I would say if you're new or just getting into computer chess boards, probably it's not saying this board is a bit much because it wouldn't be if you was to buy it. But I would say that probably starting out with a chestnut air or one of the smaller boards might be better just so you can make sure that this is something that you want to pursue, whether it's a hobby or if you're just looking for one board, that's a different story. Because say like if you only have the money to put into one board, you want to do your research well. So that's what my channel is all about. So please view my other videos and you will make an informed decision on that. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is playing offline with this board. So that's who else this board is for. If you're a big offline player now, if you say play, have a buddy that you play with every Saturday, um, you like to go to the local tournament, I mean the local hall, the lo local chess hall, and we've all done this before. Played a ton of blitz games and couldn't remember, although you know they have some value, if you could go back and remember and play through those games or maybe see some openings or just for tactics. This board here, without the app included, records your games to the board. Now, I will get and make another video with uh, just surely for off the, you know, offline play and how to extract these games. But for now, we're just gonna walk through how to set this up for playing online. Super simple, no app required. The board is off at the moment, so we first turn the board on. All right, let's go ahead and long press the power button here. And you will see, uh, three LEDs. The green mean that it's on and it has a good charge greater than 10%. The blue is just looking for Bluetooth to connect to. Now the orange button is what you want to pay, the orange LED. That means that it's ready to accept 
over the board mode. So as soon as you turn it on, it's already in over the board mode. Because again, this is something that a lot of people don't talk about with this board, but this board is over the board blitz and bullet ready. Like it scans the board, I believe about every 10, second, 10 times a second. So faster than you can move, meaning that no matter how fast you move, it's gonna capture that move when you make it. So let's just make some moves here. I'm gonna just make a few random moves. I'm not gonna do anything special. I'm just gonna play some pawn moves just to illustrate the point here. All right, so now, um, if you wanted to do that, um, you could just now save the game. Now, how do you save the game? There's a little plus button, which is the second button right here on the side. And you see the yellow, uh, I mean the orange LED that's lit up. You hold this button now for three seconds you will see that orange LED disappear. What that means is that the game has now been saved to the memory. And now if you want to say, want to play another game with your, with your, with your buddy or friend or cousin or son or daughter or whoever, set the pieces back up. And as you see, the board automatically went back into that one mode again with the orange LED. Now it is ready to play. Say if you want now, um, this is pretty cool. Say if you got a clock like I have here and you hit your clock, you know, you're playing, you make a move, your buddy makes a move, you make a move, they make a move, you make a move, they make a move, and, and so on and so forth. As you can see, you can play over the board this thing just like you would play over the board anywhere, except for it's recording the, the move to the board. So again, if you want to say that's the end of the game, just hold down the plus button for three seconds and then that orange LED goes away. It's just letting you know that it saved it to the memory. I can't remember how many games it saved, but it saves quite a few. So uh, again, I'm going to make a video just dedicated to offline with this board because again, this board has a lot to offer offline and I'll show you how to deal with the games that's on your board. Everything is super, I wouldn't say super simple, I don't want to over exaggerate it, but it's easy enough for, for pretty much anybody to, um, to, to do it or if you aren't too tech savvy, you're just willing to learn a little bit and just pay attention a little bit, you'll be able to work with it quite, quite easily, I think, in the end once you get over that little very small learning curve. All right, so obviously playing online is a very uh, important part, you know, to Chestnut Pro. So that's why I came outside since we had to change the subject from playing offline games to online games. I wanted to come from outside the house, I mean inside the house to come outside to show you that the versatility of the board to show you that if you want to be portable with the board, you can actually carry it somewhere with you. And, and Chestnut also made it easier because they created a bag, a carrying bag for this board here. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump online real quick and play a game real quick. I just want people who never have seen this or maybe be new to the channel to see how this works. If we go down here to Lee Chess, um, let me set the board up. I was out here just playing a little something. That's why the board looks like this. And I just want to set the board up real quick and tell you a few things. And what the thing I want to tell you is that I really like how they implemented um, Lee Chess with this board here because you got basically nearly the full website here versus having a, you know, a distilled version of an interface to connect the board to the chess with. So that means that you can see incoming challenges, you can see the lobby, you can play a friend. Um, and you know, it's not a whole lot of effort to go through. You just do it and that's just how it works. So with that said, uh, let's see, is there anything uh, somebody wants to play so anyway, let's go. You see down here at the bottom right here, you can play it with a friend or anything like that. So that's why I like it. They cleverly uh, inter interface this board with Lee Chess and Chess.com in such a way that I think gives you a, a nearly full blown version of the website. So let's go ahead and create a game and we will play, um, play a rated game now. Playing five plus five. Hopefully we can get a game real quick and see how that goes. And you can also see what other people want to play as well. Oh, and just as a side note, I believe you have to have a minimum of eight minutes per side or either five minutes plus five seconds in order for the board to properly interface to send and receive you know, moves from Lee Chess. 
There may be other time combinations, but there's a minimum time limit for a minimum number of moves that has to be met in order for, I don't know if it's the API or either the actual program of Chestnut or any other board itself to uh, to um, not allow that, you know, exchange of moves going to and from the board to the website. Let's see what we get here. Let's see, we got a 10 minute game. I would play that game, but see, he's, he's, you know, I don't want to, you know, maybe have to spin the board around. All right, so we got a game. All right, playing a 2,500. That is, that's something. All right, I have beat a 2,500, so. Okay. Go ahead and take that. So we're going to sort of transposition into like a sort of an elephant, but not really because with an elephant, they would have developed a pawn to uh, C5. So I'll, in this types of positions right here, hmm, let me think about this. Yeah, I like to go, I could go H3. Yeah, let me go H3 first because it stops the pin. Um, it stops that pin on uh, my F3 knight here. Okay, he brings his bishop out. Let me go ahead and go ahead and put that down right there. castle i was going to deploy my bishop but a lot of times you know because he had he got the e file coming up next it's no need to play any it's no need to play with fire there you might as well just go ahead and castle right now um you know the only i would say he might have a slight advantage not that not advantage it's be slightly better because i like his bishops as it stands but um you know that doesn't mean that um you know that they are the best bishops. So let's go ahead and um, I wanna, I wanna. Let me develop my knight to a3 because I've got the ideas that I want to try to hit his his bishop, his black bishop. Uh, in, in the elephant, a lot of times knight a3 is a um, type of idea. So. Okay, so he brings that out. So now um, if I hit his bishop, I, that, that wins the bishop pair for sure. But then again, he can always trade his white bishop for my bishop. But let me double check that if I go here. I can, you know. So he trades. Okay. Okay, so he goes here. Okay, not bad. Now, I could make a serious concession here. Um, which I'm not, by the way. I'm just going to. Actually, I could. Let's see. But I'll be weakening my king so much if I do that. Actually, I'm going to have to do it because if I don't, he's going to really get a really good knight. 
So we're just going to go for it. We're going to go ahead and kick that knight back, then take the bishop. That's what we're going to do. Now we're going to take this bishop. Now we're going to take this bishop that he takes with the queen. And now we're just going to... Should I step my king up? Mm, let me see here. Let's do this. Okay, I don't know why he did that. Because I gave my knight a little square back. He act I don't know if he actually want to do that. Because again, I he may likely just have lost a piece. Pull my queen here. Because if he takes that pawn with check, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to hit that, that knight. And he's not going to have a choice but to move it. Or best thing you do is push g5 and then I'm just going to take the bit, take the knight and then I'll mess his pawns up. So that, that, that'll that be also good. And that'll also block his queen out unless we trade queens. Yeah, I thought he'd do that. We'd we'll take that. He, I, he, I was about to say, yeah, he should just go queen takes queen because that's the best case scenario here. Okay, he takes. Now, I like this end game for me much better than I like it for him. All right, so let's go ahead and hop our knight in here. That's what we want to do. Okay, so yeah, let's do that. I like this. I like this. I like this a whole lot better for me. All right, so. that okay he pushes here now I'm gonna have to take over this e file here I like I like my chances a little bit better than I like his let me step up here maybe I can win this vulnerable F yeah I think I might I'm gonna try to win this pawn actually I think he might have he might have he might have gotten himself into some trouble here with this pawn. I got to figure out how to win it first. Oh, okay. I think I can win it like this. Yeah, I got to trade off one of his rooks, then I can win it. Okay. Okay. Take. Okay, now I can come back here and win this pawn here. Okay, that's okay. Okay, now, hmm, I can't let this guy get in on me like this. Because if I do, yes, yeah, so we're just going to have to trade. Uh, Wait a minute, hold on. Okay, wait a minute, he moved first, sorry. Let me hurry up. We're just gonna have to trade. I'm just gonna have to give him some, yeah, I'm gonna have to. There's just nothing else I can do here with this. I'm gonna have to. Okay, so if I go. I think I got more spare moves than he got. Okay, so I got more spare moves than he got. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Let's see here, I gotta be careful here. I might can win this game. See how much time I got. Let me go like this first. I'm gonna 
I had to take that. All right, now I got to get my end game hat out. One, two. Okay, I think, let's see. I can't win. I messed that up. I should have. Oh, yeah. It looks like he can get an opposition move, but he can't. Okay, then I just simply go here first. Now he has to push something. Then I step up to here. I think he just, yeah. Let's push here. Okay, so he goes here. Take this, yeah. That's it, that's it, there we go. I can win this for sure, I got this. Yep, there we go. I just got to be careful here because he got he has to come over and get this pawn. He can't catch my pawns. I think it was a draw some kind of way. I feel like he missed something, but he again he, he's gonna lose this game. This is one hundred percent gone. Yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and take this. This is one hundred percent a loss here. Hold up, but uh, hold up. But, but see, the trick now is I can go ahead and get my queen now. I could have waited actually because it looks he think he's going to get a draw, but that ain't going to happen because all I'm going to do is just uh, come here and put my queen in the corner and bring my king over. And then that's it. What, wait a minute, where'd he go? He go here. Let me just bring my king here. And then that's it. Yep. I guess he's thinking I'm gonna mess this up and I'm not. I could have even brought my king back to stop this here, but. Okay, that's cool. All right, good game. I mean, wow. I felt like even though I was up a pawn, he could have won that game. I I think the biggest thing that, um, let me see, can I review this game just a little bit only chess? I don't know if I can, but um, analysis board here. Uh, let me go back here for a second. No, let me go back here. Let me go back a little bit. I think, um, well, I think he, let me do it this way. I think where he made some type of mistake here was, I'm going to show you here. This is what I'm going to tell you where I think the mistake was at. When I went here, he should have gone knight to um, g6 because that would have stopped my bishop. Because then he, I could not have stopped him going to h6 and I had to back up. See, that stopped my maneuver of bishop to h4, bishop to g3. So here, I believe, I ain't gonna say necessarily this was the losing move by not doing knight to g6, but I feel like knight to g6 really put him in a bad place where he had to make the trades and because he made those awful trades and then let's go forward a little bit let me show you go here 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 now when i step here this gives him the awful trade for this pawn here on f5 i mean f4 to be lost so anyway there you have it there's an online game for you guys i hope you guys enjoyed it chestnut pro uh, Pre-order now. Um, link is in the pinned comment and it will also give you $80 off. Just add it to your cart. It's all you have to do. And they also sell a carrying bag as well. And as you can see, I'm outside playing now and this board is quite portable. Take care and I will see you in the next one.